Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another video for our 2D Hack and Slash series. This is a pay what you want course. There's a link in the description to uh, the resources and also to my pixel art tile set course on Udemy. Those are the ways that you can support this course. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be doing a parallax effect and this parallax effect is going to be uh, it's it's going to be pretty easy to set up. Let me see if I can show you right here. I think I have another uh, a reference file that shows what the parallax will look like. So you can see here's our main character running and the background has um, some different tombstones and the clouds and they're moving at a different pace than the player is in the foreground. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up. It's actually pretty easy in Game Maker Studio 2 and looks very nice. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create some layers for this. So we'll come into our world and we should, I don't remember whether we have, we do have the sprites already, so that's good. So we can bring this down like this and we're going to create, we'll leave our background the same and I think that's a pretty good color but we'll create a new background layer and this layer we're going to name uh, rename this layer Far Grave Graves Background and we're going to assign a sprite we'll in, Oops, that's not what I meant to do. We'll assign uh, the Graves sprite. Then we want this to tile horizontally, and then we want to give it a Y offset. And let me look at what my Y offset is going to be. So if we come into here, you can see we have a Y offset. We'll set it to 160. There we go. So those are the far ones. Now let's create another background layer. We'll rename this one. We'll name this one Close Graves Background. Close Graves Background, okay. We'll give it the same sprite, the Grave Sprite. We'll give this one a different offset and a Y offset of 180 seems to work for this one. So it's a little bit lower. It's hard to tell, but we can hide our far ones if we want so you can see. And then we'll want to tile this horizontally as well. Now, uh, if you look, both of, our, both of our backgrounds right here, they start kind of in the same spot. So it looks really awkward. We've got a tree right here, the same gravestones right here. It just looks awkward. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our far background and we're going to give it... Uh, an X offset so that it won't line up with this one. So we'll do 256 and it will still tile but that offsets it a bit so that they don't overlap like right on top of each other. Okay. So now what we're going to need to do is set up the parallax effect and we'll create a new object for this. So let's come back to our workspace, hide this. We'll create a new object and we'll call this O parallax now this object is going to be pretty simple let's start with the very basics which is creating the parallax effect so add a step event to the object and inside of here we can we can um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the the background the backgrounds X position equal to the player's X position divided by some number. So as the player moves, the background will move as well, but it will move slower because it's the, it's being, the speed basically is being divided by a certain amount. And that's the quick and easy way to create a parallax effect. So we'll say layer X, and this just sets a layer's X position. And so we want to set the close Graves background. We want to make sure that that's spelled correctly. If it's not, this won't work. To 
o underscore skeleton dot x divided by 2.5 like this. Then we'll do layer x far graves background and we'll set this to o, o skeleton dot x divided by 1.8 and we'll do one more layer x clouds what did we name it oh also we want our clouds to be at, in between our far background and our actual background so clouds background so clouds background o skeleton dot x divided by 1.2 so there now we're this all we have to do now is put this inside of our room so drag the parallax object into the room i'm just going to put it up uh, we'll need to be on the right layer though. Go to the instances layer, drag it up into the top corner like that, run your game, and it, you should see that we immediately get a parallax effect with all of these backgrounds. The problem is that the, the problem here is that our backgrounds are all white. So we need to set that up. So we're going to use uh, we're going to use object variables variables for this because um, this is actually I don't remember if I've used object variables yet in this series but object variables are actually really good for this because we're going to be setting the color of these backgrounds and it's if you use an object variable you can actually see the color you can choose a color so we're going to do um, right here we'll do variable definitions. And this is where we can create an object variable. If you're in Game Maker Studio 1.4, unfortunately, you can't use object variables. You'll just have to create these colors in a create event. Um, and the way that you would do that is create event. And then you would say close gray equals make color red, green, blue, RGB. And then you would pass in the red, green, blue values of the colors that I'm about to show you. Like red, green, blue, like that. Okay? And then you could use this variable. But in Game Maker Studio 2, we can use object variables. So we'll just add a new object variable. We'll set our type to color. And then we'll select right here to choose our color. And for the close gray, I'm going to do, let's see, I think it's just this one right here. No, it's this one. Okay. So it's 102, 102, 102. So if you're doing the red, green, blue in Game Maker Studio 1.4, your red value would be 102, green would be 102, blue value would be 102. And then we need to make sure our alpha is all the way so it's actually not transparent. And press OK. Now we didn't need to name this variable, so we'll name it close gray. And then we'll create another one. And we'll make this one a color as well. And we'll name this one far gray. And we'll select our color by clicking there. And this one, this one is going to be 1 over. So it's 127, 127, 127. And make sure we bring the alpha up. And there we go, we've got our close gray and our far gray. Now we need to use these variables to set, uh, we'll come into our create event, we need to set the layer. Oh, speaking of which, I should mention how to do this in Game Maker Studio 1.4. <laughs> so in Game Maker Studio 1.4, I think it's um, draw background, ground tiled. And then you give it a background. So you know the background that you're using, whatever this is, background. And then you give it an X and a Y position. So you'll do, you know, you'll do your Y offset that we set up in the room, 256 or whatever. Um, you'll do, you'll do uh, 
well, let's see, you'll probably do x first. So you'll do this value first, whatever that is. Then you'll do your y value, 256, whatever I set that to. And then whether it's tiled horizontally, you'll say true. Tiled vertically, you'll say false. I don't remember exactly the arguments that go into this. You can middle click on it and see exactly what arguments, but this will give you the general idea and you should be able to figure it out. So if you get stuck, post in the comments and I can, I can try and help you. Okay, so now we're back to our creative event. Now we need to set the, oh, also in the draw background tiled function, you can pass in a color. So you would pass in the color that you want to draw. It's the blend value, I think. So you'd pass in the blend value. So it's actually, I'm going to be honest, it's actually a little bit easier in GameMaker Studio 1.4 because it's a single function call for each of these. But the setup in this is probably better in the end uh, because of depth stuff. So now what we need to do is create, we need to set the blend mode for our background. Now they have a function called layer background blend. And you'd think we'd just be able to pass in close graves background and then say our blend value, which would be close gray, right? Um, close gray. What's, what's going on here? Is that the right value? I guess, oh, I guess it is. Okay, perfect. It's just a different color than I was expecting, but that's okay. Okay. So um, you'd think you'd be able to do this, but what I found is that this doesn't work. If we run our game, uh, the close background is still gonna be white. So uh, we middle click on this, and you can see that this requires a background element ID. So you can't just pass in the name. You have to get a unique ID for the background element to change. And this code right here is how you do it. So they pretty much have the code right there to show you how to do it. So let's come back in and type out this code. So we'll say var layer ID equals layer get ID. And then the layer that we pass in is just this layer right here, like that. And then we'll say var background ID, because we're getting the layer ID, but now we need to get the background within that layer, I guess. It's a little confusing. Um, for me, because it's new to me, background, get ID, and then we pass in our layer ID, so layer ID, like that. And then we pass in our background ID right here, and that should give us what we need, which is dark graves. Perfect. Now we can copy this paste it down here, change this to far gray, and this to far graves background. And technically we don't need to redefine these variables. We can just remove those because they've already been defined up here. So we can just reuse them down here and we can run. And there you go, nice parallax background. We're looking really good. This is starting to look like the full game, right? And I guess this doesn't tile perfectly. Huh. You can fix that if you want to spend the time to, but I've never actually noticed that. I guess it's fine and kind of like an uneven jagged graveyard for it not to tile quite perfectly. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this lesson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and I will talk to you guys later.